Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Tanks. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we have a community replay sent in by Grand ADM Corgi in the Stridsvon 103B on Scorpion Pass. And it's Team Destruction. And uh, yeah, as you guys have already seen, their team has a Dengus who already drove off a cliff, killed himself in a Scorpion G. Because 10 seconds into the match, you gotta die somehow. <laughs> so, uh, how's everybody doing tonight? We're gonna uh, get to see some interesting gameplay from the Stridsvon we haven't seen in a long time, and I hope that I'm pronouncing that right. I think I am. I think that this is one of those tanks that I actually pronunciate or enunciate correctly. Um, I could be wrong. If there's any Swedish out there, which I do know there are. I, I know that there are a lot of people from around the world that tune in to watch this channel, and uh, I appreciate every one of you. And I love getting those messages from people saying, Hey man, it's me from Germany. Or, Hey man, it's me from New Zealand. Or, Hey man, it's me from uh, the Sudan. Or, you know, all over the world, man. It's so awesome that, you know, because I come from a place where there's just, like we're in the middle of nowhere in uh, rural southeast Ohio here in the United States. And uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, other people around. So it's interesting for me, and nice shot right into the side of the Progetto. Uh, <laughs> that Italian tank is in for a rough day if that's how he's going to start. He has no health left, and uh, this Stridsvon is in the perfect... Oh, it doesn't get the kill there uh, a little bit late, but he's in the perfect place to take advantage of this match. Now, he's got to watch that medium on his right. He's going to get detected. Nah, the Stridsvon is not going to get detected. Look at that detection circle, Spartan. Uh, that's right, I'm actually viewing this in full definition. Woo! I can do that while recording because of my new computer and using Premiere. It's a thing. It's still a smaller window than if I was playing the game, but at least it's better than nothing. So I can read things. Uh, but we have an AT-15 out here. We are detected right now, uh, and that's not preferable. But, <laughs> really? What are you doing, Jumbo Sherman? Is that why we got detected? That dingus push into us and ruin our camo rating so that they could all see us? Because that's a that's a that's a paddling waiting to happen right there. Like <laughs> that'll get you put into a hurt locker. What was that? <laughs> okay, that was a bit of a glitch there for a second. And I've I've had that happen with my Death Star a couple times uh, lately. I don't know if it's server lag or what, but he does get the Pershing out of the game. Uh, he's got a smorgasbord of, of people right in front of him. <laughs> He's in a Swedish tank destroyer, and I used, I think, I think smorgasbord is a Swedish uh, word. So uh, let me know if I'm right. <laughs> but he's got a, a plethora of bad guys sitting right in front of him that he can just farm with this amazing 105mm gun, and they can't even see him. Getting another shot into the ISM before the ISM can get over the hump. And this LTTB could be a potential problem. If we don't get him off the board now he doesn't have a whole lot of health but he's gonna have to shoot him twice and he snapshots but doesn't quite get the shell on him uh, this LTTB is running around like a crazy person we got a badger down low uh, he's gonna get behind the rock unfortunately we do not get a shot into him um, AT-15 though <laughs> oh nope he's on the other side of the ridge line now this is the one thing about the uh, ridge line that you gotta oh hello Are you coming out to play oh please do oh we missed this turret that was a, oh, at least somebody got the uh, ISM in the background. But trying to shoot the turret of an uh, LTTB is not easy, especially one that's moving around. But if he goes back to that spot, wait for it. Come on, you know you want to, light tank. You can't resist. You cannot resist. Resistance is futile. <laughs> uh, but that being said, the game has just kind of obliterated itself, and we are just sitting here watching. And I hate being in this position. Like, not this position, but like, when you're late in a game, you don't feel like you've done a whole lot. You know, that position is what I'm talking about. Not like the actual position he's sitting in. Uh, because in a team destruction, being able to snipe from the ridge line in a basically invisible tank, uh, as long as you don't have a Jumbo Sherman just run into the side of you and destroy your camo rating. But, oh, he snapshots and just misses the LTTB. That, that little tank is deceptively quick, so you got to aim ahead of him. Are we going to get the shot over the ridge line? Oh, he's, he's driving away! Oh, no. Nope, not quite. Unfortunate, but, you know, it is a thing. 
But yeah, we still have these two mediums behind him. Now, I have no problem with a tank destroyer sitting on this ridge line, taking what the enemy gives him. He's had a lot of tanks to shoot at, he's done his job, and now he's relocating to help his team even more. Uh, these medium tanks, on the other hand, yeah, I know that you're not top tier. I get that. But you can do more than just sit at the back with a tank destroyer. Now, maybe they've done a lot of damage. I know they've gotten shot at least once, or at least one of them has. So maybe they've done some damage, I don't know. But, generally speaking, you don't want to be up on that ridge line in a medium. Uh, because you, you have mobility, you have... I know it's a jumbo Sherman, or a super Sherman, so it's not the most mobile tank in the world. It's not got the most armor in the world. But you can do things, and uh, you can get out there and find them at the very least. But we do have some shots on the C-50M. Is he going to shoot? Uh, he gets a track hit. Um, I would aim just a little higher and to the left to try to go through the side armor instead of that bottom plate, but doesn't matter, he goes through it anyway. Uh, and then you also have the turret that you can easily sneak a shell into. Now the uh, 50 TP, is it? No, 53 TP, it's a tier 8, is broadside on and now he's tracked and he's getting all of this uh, damage for spotting this 53 TP because he's got binos and camo net. Now, as you guys know, binos and camo net normally would disappear every time you fire or if you move like he's rotating his tank but because he's in the Swedish tank destroyer he has siege mode and while he's in siege mode the camo net and binos do not go away unless you move forward or back up that's the only time that your camo will disappear and that is what makes this tank so special and on maps like this where you can do what it's built to do which is Camp ridge lines. It's what it does in real life. It gets behind a ridge line. It uses. It just barely sticks anything up. The gun is mounted to the top of the tank. It just sticks the gun over, and it's got a nice little plow on the front for a little bit of spaced armor protection. Even though it's used in real life to dig in, uh, but you know, it, in this game, it works as spaced armor, so you can bounce a lot of rounds off the front of this thing. Uh, that being said, it doesn't have a lot of armor. So if you get hit in the top by artillery or by anybody shooting high explosive death stars in particular, uh, it, it's going to be death. Now we've got the LTTB spotted, but we're on the ridge line and that's not preferable. So immediately throws it in reverse. He's still in siege mode. Uh, he doesn't need to go crazy. He's, he's pr relatively protected, so he can kind of move around in siege mode. Now obviously while you're in siege mode, you're not very quick. You're not very maneuverable, but you can make it happen and you do rotate relatively quickly so um, that can catch light tanks off guard too while you're in siege mode because they might not expect you to rotate as quickly as you do now he's got to be careful here because he's going to be given the side of his tank to anybody that this guy's spotting for uh, when he was looking over the ridge line there yes there's a rock there but you're taking a huge risk and they they are shooting at him so he's got to think about this before he makes his next move that light tank isn't spotting just for no reason. Like, he's spotting for a reason. And there goes our intrepid hero who goes over the hill, killing the LTTB. I'll give you props. Getting that guy off the board is amazing, but you're probably going to lose your life in the process because now you're spotted skylined on the side of the ridgeline. Uh, and the rounds are coming. Now, he's going to use his binos here, and hopefully he can see them. If they can see him... Oh, he sees shots. Are we going to get a good... Nope, not quite. Now we've got a tank destroyer creeping up behind him. It's a 2v4 right now, guys. Two versus four. We've got the intrepid hero with 73 hit points because he skylined himself after kill after making a YOLO run on a freaking light tank. Um, you know, because reasons. But it happens. We, we all make bad plays. I know you guys have seen plenty from me. So, <laughs> and then you've, you haven't seen a lot more than I make. Um, because I am no no master at the game myself, but you gotta you gotta start to like catalog this stuff in your head of hey if I do this this is gonna happen, um, and it's a lot easier for me to sit here in after spec watching a clip and go all right this guy's making a bad move because you're not in the moment you know what I mean now a badger versus a Stridsvon that is a lot of DPM looking at each other one's got armor the other not so much. And they both penetrate each other right there. <laughs> Phrasing again. Now, this is not a good place to be. He's hauled down, and you're facing a badger. Get out of there. This is not a good place. This is this is exactly where you don't want to end up. So now, he's going to use his mobility. Now, the badger is going to... He's going to turtle up here. No, no pun intended. But he's going to turtle up. He's got to. He knows that this thing has mobility. But 
what he's doing is he's staying below the ridge line. Now this badger's pushing up on him, which is the dumbest thing he could do at this situation. Because in order to shoot the Stridsvon, he has to give up his weak spot. And the Stridsvon's going to creep up the hill, and now look at that bottom plate. Mm, just juicy. Now he can take a hit. Now if this badger loads Hesh and hits the top of his tank, which is what he should do, that's going to that's gonna stink. But he's not. He's loading armor piercing. He's shooting straight into the spaced armor on the front of the tank. He doesn't penetrate. And the Stridsvon takes him down. Well played. Great engagement. Way to use your mobility to get close and make the badger make the mistake. That is a huge play. Now there's two people left. Uh, the heavy tank, I think, if I remember correctly, was last spotted over at like F5. And it was a T-34 tier 8 heavy uh, premium tank, American. And then the tank destroyer, I'm not 100% sure what that is. But our, our friend over here only has 73 hit points. And they have spotted the tank destroyer. Now we need to get into siege mode as soon as possible to get a good shot the next time that thing pops up. If I... You know, I'm not 100%. There we go. We've actually got the uh, T-34 spotted, and he's in view range of us. Luckily, he doesn't have good view range or a bad crew or something. But he's got 700 health, which means we got to pin him twice. He's going to get behind the rock, maybe? Oh, he stopped. Why would you stop? You're never... Oh, and he low rolls him, leaving him with my favorite number, 43 hit points. You got to love it. You got to love that mercy roll right at the end. Now, you're spotted, and there is a tank destroyer off to your right. I hope that he doesn't have a shot. He's probably in the water, which means he doesn't have a shot on you. But you got to keep that in mind because I don't know what it is, but it could potentially hurt you. And now you are invisible and uh, there's nobody in range to spot you. And you definitely have the view range. Well, never mind. I was going to say you definitely have the view range to spot them. But it's a 1v2. We know the T-34 is a one-shot kill. What is it that he's up against? I wasn't paying attention to the death beat. He's going to go into siege mode on the back side of the ridgeline. Creep up. He's still got the rock. And there it is, a tortoise. He's a one-shot kill as well. Is he going to get a shot? The tortoise is not going to see it in time. Aim the shot, and he pins through the front armor. I know there's some flat spots on the front armor of the tortoise, but like, I, I, he went through. I'm not going to complain. He, he definitely went through. He does get detected. The T-34 pins him. That was a good shot by the T-34, but that's going to be the death of the T-34 for sure. And he keeps getting that nasty little, uh, like, rise. I'm not 100% sure what that is. But he finished the game with a top gun, getting 16 penetration, 6 kills. What is that? 5,720 damage and 800 blocked. So uh, that is a pretty solid game for a 105mm in a Tier 10 lobby. So, uh, yeah, well done, Mr. Grand ADM Corgi. Appreciate you sending the video in. 5,720 damage, mastery ace tanker, six kills. Very well done. So if you like what we're doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.